divided by? Still tracing our family roots? Yeah. Just look for the Dust Bowl elbows. We have those? Oh, yeah. But Jurgen's Original Cherry Almond Lotion keeps away the elbow drought. Smell it. I love it. This one had a lot of husbands. And hydrating coconut lotion. Jurgen's. Most bladder leak pads were similar. Until Always Discreet invented a pad that protects differently with two rapid dry layers for strong protection that's always discreet. Question your protection. Try Always Discreet. Was there anything that you took from the set of the original movie that you still have? You, you know, I did end up with a daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, tune in tomorrow for our David Arquette exclusive. He's got a real cool announcement, especially for screen fans. Yeah, and we're also talking to Jerry Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. He's got some big Seinfeld news. But we got to say goodbye now to our oh, friend man. Boris. Well, Thank thanks you for, for being us. here. Thank you so much. Oh, so Boris, don't you have a fire to go put out or something, man? Listen, man, if you look, if you... Happening now. We're looking at the likelihood of more heavy rainfall. I'll be back in a bit to talk about how much and when. The city of San Antonio considering its largest ever bond program, the possible final price tag, and what projects it could include next. And University Health is expanding. We have details on a multi-million dollar investment to help serve one growing area of San Antonio. The News at 5 starts right now. At first at five, a state DPS trooper facing charges of child indecency and child pornography. A Texas Department of Public Safety official says 34-year-old Fredis Rivas was arrested in Comal County on Monday. He was fired yesterday after DPS learned about these allegations. Rivas has been with the DPS since 2013. He was assigned as a state trooper in Luling. He was booked into the Comal County Jail with bonds totaling $150,000. This investigation now being handled by the Texas Rangers and the Attorney General. A man is recovering after he was shot in the leg early this morning, and for some reason, he was not helping investigators find the person who shot him. San Antonio police say the shooting happened around 7 a.m. in the 10,900 block of Laureate Avenue. That's near I-10 and Fredericksburg Road. Uh, officers say the suspect didn't want to cooperate with them. The man was taken to the University Hospital. He is expected to be okay. He wrote nearly a million dollars worth of bad checks, and now he's been sentenced to 20 years in prison. 36-year-old John Cardenas found guilty of theft of service. According to the Bear County District Attorney's Office, Cardenas hosted a series of football events. He promised attendees they would be seen by college recruiters. He reportedly wrote thousands of dollars worth of hot checks for charter buses and uniforms. In another case, the DA's office says Cardenas hosted a group at the Hyatt rather the Hill Country Hyatt. His check for the rooms, cabanas and meals all bounced. In total, he's suspected of writing $950,000 worth of bad checks. If two people shot at, both of them are okay, but the suspect is still on the run at this hour. San Antonio police tell us the shooting began with an argument at a Woody's Wireless in the 1400 block of West Hildebrand Avenue. That's right off I-10. They say a customer was fighting with employees over some property he left at the store. The customer was asked to leave, and at some point he started shooting at the employees and then took off. One employee grazed by a bullet. He's okay. SAPD says another employee chased after that suspect but turned back after the suspect fired a shot at his vehicle. He was not hit. In the city of San Antonio beginning the process for its largest ever bond program before voters can approve what is expected to be a $1.2 billion five-year program. The city's trying to figure out what will go into it. City Council just got its first look at all the possibilities. Garrett Berger joins us now live. So Garrett, what kinds of things are they expected to include in this? Well, as you mentioned, this is by far the large bond program the city's ever considered. 40% larger, actually more than 40% larger than the one in 2017. However, the $1.2 billion program is not even half of what has been requested uh, so far for it or a fifth of the total infrastructure needs of the city. Now, city staff presented the council with six possible areas for the bond dollars for them to consider, like streets, municipal facilities, and parks. Housing is a new area recently made possible by a voter-approved charter change. Now, the city wants to preserve and produce more than 28,000 housing, affordable housing units over the next 10 years, for which it suggests including a quarter billion dollars in this bond program. I want to stress that we need to use this money to help us meet the goals 
for those that are 50% AMI or below. That's where we need to use our resources. But I don't want to not mention that we need all types of housing. Staff also asked council members to prioritize broad areas for the bond. That includes things like drainage projects, trailways, now that those sales tax dollars are going away, and of course, rebuilding the worst of the city streets, a top concern for many people. Now for District 10's Clayton Perry, the $100 million city staff proposed for that isn't nearly enough. I just don't see how we're ever going to get there and, and meet the expectations of our neighbors and our neighborhoods without putting more investment towards our streets, which are in a lot of places crappy. I mean really crappy streets. Now based on the discussions today, city staff are going to compile a proposal for the, for the bond program and bring it before the council and then it'll go before several committees for review. Ultimately it should get to voters sometime in May. Live at the Municipal Plaza, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. A family escaping a house fire unharmed last night. As for what caused it, Bear County firefighters believe all this was from a lightning strike. It happened about 10 o'clock on the northwest side. Firefighters called to a home in the 10,000 block of Mustang Rise. They say lightning sparked a fire on the outside of the home and in the attic. Two people who were inside managed to get out safely. No one else was hurt. All righty, take a look outside. Well, hello, Steve. Hi. <laughs> you're, you're looking at our future cast there. All right. Uh, well, there you have it. Our almanac today, 66 in the morning, 90 for the high temperature. Now, rainfall, a little misleading, 0.62 since midnight, but yesterday we tallied up over an inch. We'll get to more of the totals in a moment. Temperatures generally in the 80s to near 90, but look at some of the rainfall accumulations. Panamaria, Maria, 1.1 inches, Canyon Lake, Mixed backyard, four inches, Universal City, 4.45. We'll go over more totals, what you can expect from our next bout of rain and when that comes coming up. Thank you, Adam and Steve. You're welcome. The coming weeks expected to make a mark on COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations and deaths across the country. The CDC predicting there will be a significant decrease through October. ABC's Rena Roy explains as of now, the focus remains on getting as many eligible Americans vaccinated. COVID-19 shots could soon be rolled out for younger children, with the FDA now reviewing data from Pfizer's vaccine trials in kids ages 5 to 11. CEO Albert Borla speaking to The Atlantic. So they should take as much time as they think it's appropriate for them to have high levels of comfort and if approved, uh, we will be ready to have the vaccine available. Pfizer says its vaccine is safe and effective at a lower dose in that age group. The number of COVID patients is down more than 20% since early this month, but hundreds of American kids are still hospitalized every day. This year, it just seems like they're just so much sicker. Um, I can't breathe. I'm worried and anxious for them. This as vaccine mandates spark outrage in some across the country. My in New York, a fear of staffing shortages with some essential workers defying the new rules. Stop the mandate! Unvaccinated teachers and school staff have until Friday to get at least one shot or be dismissed. United Airlines has fired up to 593 employees who chose not to get vaccinated when it mandated vaccines for all employees. We wanted to make sure that all of our employees, when they show up to work, that we make that environment as safe as possible. With more Americans getting their shots, health experts say we could be turning the corner here in the U.S. The CDC predicting cases, hospitalizations and deaths will all go down over the next month. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. University Health is planning for its future on the south side. Today they announced they are in the process of purchasing 68 acres to build on. The land located right next to Texas A&M San Antonio so far there's no concrete goal for the area, but University Health says building a clinic or a new hospital are very real possibilities. Staff and county leaders say it's all about providing services to all of those in Bear County. And instead of having to drive 40 minutes across town to have a medical procedure, it's much easier to be able to have that five or 10 minutes away from your home. This gives us the opportunity to, to provide something closer to people's homes and, uh, and, uh, and make it more convenient where they live and where they work. University Health invested $10.4 million into the project.
a plan to keep the government still running, still being discussed by Congress. And one major issue, though, is being paused. ABC's Ike Ajoki is in Washington with what leaders have dropped to keep the government funded through the next two months. This morning, progress on Capitol Hill. Overnight, Senate Democrat and Republican leadership working behind the scenes to fast track a bill that would fund the government through December 3rd. Barring objections, a vote could come as early as Wednesday. To prevent a government shutdown, Senate Democrats will be introducing a continuing resolution that keeps the government open. The new Senate bill will attempt to fund the government alone, leaving out efforts to also raise the debt limit, which pays for costs the nation has already racked up. Republicans want Democrats to do it alone, but Democrats say that breaks with the tradition of raising the debt limit on a bipartisan basis. If they're d determined to spend at least three and a half trillion dollars more in borrowed money, that they were going to have to lift the debt ceiling to accommodate that debt by themselves. Meanwhile, President Biden fighting to keep his domestic agenda alive, canceling his Chicago trip today and yesterday meeting with moderate Senators Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema. They're really good, honest, straightforward negotiations. Speaker Nancy Pelosi trying to move things forward, now saying she'll bring the $1 trillion infrastructure bill to the floor Thursday without the larger spending package most of her members prefer. I have calmness because I have confidence in our House Democrats. They care about America's working families. That didn't go over well, and her and progressive members warned they'll vote no on the bipartisan bill unless the larger spending bill that expands child care, education, health care, and addresses climate change is also agreed to. Progressive Democrat Representative Ro Khanna said he and about 50 other Democrats will vote no on the $1 trillion package if the larger human infrastructure package isn't also passed. Ike Ajachi, ABC News, Washington. The special election to fill the House seat in District 118 now headed off to a runoff. Republican John Lujan and Democrat Frank Ramirez will now go head to head in a runoff election. The seat once filled by State Representative Leo Pacheco is currently vacant. Last night's election, Lujan won 41 percent of the vote. Ramirez won 20 percent. Uh, runoff date has not yet been set. The San Antonio business and tech community is growing more and more every year. They're also becoming more diverse. Today, we hosted a Startup Week town hall to preview San Antonio Startup Week in October. One of the panelists is a Latina business owner here in San Antonio. And during today's town hall, which happens to be during Hispanic Heritage Month, she gave some words of wisdom to Hispanic women looking to start their own business in the Alamo City. Take advantage of the opportunities that are coming to you that if if right now San Antonio wants to support and bring up Latina Hispanic women, <laughs> just show up and do your part and do your best and try hard and apply all the things that make you a special, unique person. If you're wanting to learn more about Startup Week or want tips on how to start your own business, you can watch the town hall right now on KSAT.com. You know the saying, everything is bigger in Texas. Well, it is homecoming season, and for many students, it's all about the moms. How social media could expand Texas mom culture. Coming up. But first, we're talking money. More online-only banks are popping up, and they may seem convenient, but they could be a hassle when you actually need someone to help you. Where to turn if you've already signed up next. New at five online banking. It's convenient as ever. But what are banks? What about banks that are online only? They can be popular alternatives to the brick and mortar branches offering things like no overdraft fees. But as 12 on your side's Marilyn Wards reports, there can be a frustrating downside when you have a problem and you need to get a hold of a real human to handle it. Zero fees, early pay options, and higher interest rates. It's no wonder many people are opening online-only bank accounts. Online banks can be attractive options. But Consumer Reports' Octavio Blanco says there can be drawbacks, especially when you need help. If you need help, reaching an actual human at the company to help you may not be easy. So to get an issue resolved, you might have to get creative. Try to find the company's main number online and ask to speak to the office of the CEO. 
Explain your situation clearly. And remember to be nice, no matter how frustrated or angry you might get. Another way to get attention? Social media. Send a direct message to the company on Twitter instead of a public tweet. Give the company a chance to fix the problem before you make a scene publicly. They may appreciate that. And it may give you a quicker and more helpful response. Chime, the biggest online-only bank, says the company plans to offer full 24-7 customer service. If you're still having trouble contacting someone, you can file a complaint with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And if you think you've gotten bad service, report it to the Better Business Bureau. But even before you choose a banking service, do some checking to see what other customers are saying. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, check this out. If you live in Texas, you're probably familiar with moms. They're a homecoming tradition for high school football, and they can be pricey. Well, now videos on TikTok are giving more people a look at what mom season is all about. And today, Alicia Barrera and RJ Marquez chatted about those videos during the latest episode of KSAT News Now. It's a different kind of newscast that streams on KSAT.com. They talk about current events, and fun topics like moms and tacos. You can watch the full episode right now on our website. While you're there, you can help narrow down the best taco place in San Antonio. But mom's the word for homecoming. Yeah, homecoming's coming up. In the meantime, we're keeping an eye out on the weather. Last night was very loud. Yeah, very loud out there last night. Definitely loud conditions and more thunderstorms are likely on the way as well. And some heavy rainfall associated with those. Let's take a look at our headlines. More heavy rain is in the works Some flash flooding. I think will be the main risk opposed to any severe thunderstorms. We actually have some saturated soil again, and we're going to add several more inches of rain to that in spots, but then we'll be drying out by Sunday and especially next week. So let's take a look at the rainfall accumulations and most most of it was locally and east of San Antonio, and that's where we saw some pretty hefty accumulations. New Braunfels 2.71 officially at the airport in San Antonio 2.23. Get down just west of Pleasanton 2.8. Zoom in a little bit tighter. Spring Branch about four and a half inches of rainfall and check out this spot right here. New Berlin and kind of on the northeast side of New Berlin between New Berlin and Seguin about seven inches measured in this rain gauge that was posted to our KSAT weather authority app via the pins section. So we always welcome your photos of rain gauges. Now this is also very good for the aquifer. So these are the zones where we really like to see the rain, this purple zone and that red zone. We have them outlined there and you look at the accumulation over the past 36 hours. It was good rainfall to boost the aquifer. I mean, it's nice to see it elsewhere. Don't get me wrong, but sometimes location really counts when it comes to rain, particularly with our aquifer. So the aquifer is getting a good boost and still soaking it up. Right now, we're mostly clear, but we do have some thunderstorms in Mexico across the Rio Grande. They're likely to stay there. However, you notice these clouds, the blow off clouds way aloft at about 30,000 feet there. Some of them are streaming our way, so they'll give some of us actually a pretty nice sunset this evening with those high clouds. Some showers and storms just north of San Antonio and even closer to Wichita Falls, but not quite as active out there this evening and tonight as what we had last night. A new disturbance, though, is dropping in over the Rockies in the four corner states. That new disturbance is going to help stir things up by late tomorrow night and into Friday. So here's our future cast, and I like this particular model. It's handling and timing of the situation. Tomorrow, we'll start the day with low clouds and some a lot of sunshine into the afternoon. We can't rule out a few stray pop up thunder showers by tomorrow afternoon. This model's not really showing it, but I won't be surprised if we get a few. The main focus is tomorrow after midnight and close to dawn on Friday. Notice by 10 o'clock starting to see some organization to the west, moving into the hill country by about 3, 4 a.m. And then through the morning commute on Friday, we'll likely have some areas of very heavy rainfall and we could easily tally up another three to five inches in parts of our area with locally higher amounts possible as well. That three to five should actually be a fairly wide swath, but then there will be those pockets of exceptionally higher rainfall accumulations. And remember, we're fairly saturated, so flash flooding is the main concern. So 30% chance tomorrow up to 70% Friday and still 60% chances on Saturday. Temps now 
80s right near 90 this evening will fall through the 70s pretty quickly, turning cloudy overnight and tomorrow. Just a few isolated pop up showers possible. Otherwise, 73 in the morning near 90 the high. It's Friday, Friday night through Saturday when we're expecting more heavy rainfall. Football games are on Friday, though, Adam. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, that's what Greg's looking for. Yeah. Bring your umbrella, Greg. The All lightning right. is my big concern. That's yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, because they'll mm -hmm. cancel games because of that. You sure will. All right, so this guy's signing was the most surprising Spurs signing for me. You're talking about Brent Forbes, who played for a national championship last year with Milwaukee, and now is back in silver and black. What brought him back, he will let us know. And how about an NFL first for one of the Cowboys' tight ends? Not one, but two, in fact, coming up. As the Spurs begin their 2021 training camp with as many as eight new faces on the roster, one familiar face is Bryn Forbes. Forbes has returned to silver and black after winning his first ever NBA World Championship with the Milwaukee Bucks last year, but decided to opt out of the second year of his contract with Milwaukee when he got the chance to return to San Antonio. Oh man, this place is like my second home, you know? Um, it's been great. Um, it was crazy. It's, it's been a crazy year and a half year, um, you know, but but right when I found out I was going to be coming back, I was extremely happy. Um, you know, I feel like I feel like this will be my home for a long time and I'm excited to be here. Preseason game one against the Utah Jazz is Monday at 730 at the AT&T Center and we will be there. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. After dominating the Philadelphia Eagles in their home opener in prime time in the first division game, the Cowboys now move on to host undefeated Carolina. The Panthers are coming off their 24 to 9 victory over the Texans last Thursday night while the Cowboys put together back to back wins. And one of the big weapons on offense Monday night was tight end Dalton Schultz, who caught not one but two touchdown passes in the 41 21 victory, the first two of his career. I just think it's hard to guard. Um, obviously, you have three electric players in our receivers when MG's healthy. Um, I mean, Sed came in, and all, I mean, he's just as just as electric. Um, so I think it's it's tough when we have as much depth as we have, and you know, guys, you know, sit back and try to play shell, um, which opens up a lot of opportunities for tight ends in the middle. So I think it it plays well. I mean, there's we got options everywhere, which is a good problem to have. Kickoff Sunday in AT&T Stadium is at high noon, and KSAT 12 Sports will be there as well. The UTSA Roadrunners had a difficult time this morning battling Mother Nature. A number of lightning delays interrupted their practice as they prepare for winless UNLV with a chance to go 5-0 this Saturday in the Alamo Dome at 5 p.m. But one thing we have learned is that UTSA has extended Jeff Trader's co original five-year contract for another year. His original deal called for $800,000 a year in base salary in year one with incentives for wins and bowl games. Now the school has added a six-year, and today coach confirmed it. They just asked me if I'd want an extension, and I said, sounds great to me, and uh, called my agent, and they talked, and I, I didn't have anything to do with it. I just let my agent and Dr. Compost take care of it, and, you know, that's, that's what happened. He obviously has that program headed in the right direction. They want to make sure he stays put for the present <laughs> and <laughs> for the immediate future as well. A guy they want to keep happy. You got it. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Tomorrow morning, cloudy and in the lower 70s. By the afternoon, we're looking at a lot of sunshine and right around the 90 degree mark for most of us. Catula 94, 89, the high in New Braunfels. And then rain chances really ramp up by early, early Friday morning all the way through Saturday. Thanks, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. World News Up next. See you at 6.